to run through some slides to try to explain um, the REV proceeding and some um, related issues. Um, but the slides are not must-see TV. So if you have questions, please feel free to raise your hand um, and ask them, and I will do my absolute best to answer them. Um, on the preceding uh, sessions that we've held, I've had two other, uh, or two experts, um, to help me answer questions tonight. I'm more or less on my own, so if we can't answer your question tonight, we will certainly try to get you an answer um, eventually. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, the REV, or Reforming the Energy Vision Proceeding, uh, is a um, proceeding in front of the Public Service Commission, as we already mentioned. Um, the Public Service Commission is the decision-making body, and the, public, uh, the Department of Public Service uh, is the staff that supports that decision-making body. And our mission is to provide affordable, safe, reliable, um, and secure access to electric, gas, steam, telecommunications, and water while protecting the environment. <clears throat> Reforming the energy vision is um, part of the proceeding is uh, part of New York's comprehensive strategy to develop a modern, more resilient, um, more reliable, and cleaner, less carbon intense um, electricity and energy system. Um, the proceeding uh, that we're talking about, specifically the REV proceeding, will include groundbreaking regulatory reform. There's some of the specifics we'll talk about later. Um, it, we're also looking to evolve uh, the current state programs that support um, energy efficiency and renewable energy. Uh, the, currently, the New York State Energy Research, Research and Development Authority, otherwise known as NYSERDA, has a proposal for a clean energy fund um, in front of the commission. The commission has asked them to uh, uh, update it and um, supplement it. Uh, and then the commission will act on their request. Um, once that's in, we're expecting the supplement in, in uh, a few weeks. So you can take a look at the proposal uh, that's on the commission's website now. Um, and when they put the supplement, we encourage folks to take a look at those and uh, provide comments, um, just like you can provide comments to, on this proceeding uh, in REV. Um, New York Sun is a groundbreaking um, program started by uh, Governor Cuomo, and that supports solar PV installations on residential and small commercial. Uh, and I think it's three gigawatts that they're trying to get installed through that program. I might have that number wrong. Um, and then the New York Green Bank, it's the largest green bank in the country. Um, currently, it's, uh, the commission has already approved um, funding for capitalization of $250 million. The ultimate goal is to get a capitalization of a billion dollars into that bank. Um, and that is being set up and designed to leverage private investment um, using the, that capitalization um, so we can grow the, the green economy and get enough um, the green infrastructure for our energy system um, up to the scale that we need it to face the challenge of climate change and uh, that, that we're facing today. Um, Traditionally, the state uh, sponsored programs were rebate programs um, where you get a rebate for putting in a more efficient uh, furnace, for instance. Um, these types of programs are uh, trying to get more private, leverage more private investment and um, recycle the, the public funds um, rather than just continually handing them out one-shot deals. The consumer experience today it's, it's basically a one-way street. The utility sends you uh, electricity, and usually once a month, sometimes once every two months, you get a bill. Um, so there's not a lot of interaction between customers and the utility most of the time, unless there's a problem. Um, the industry itself is currently under quite a bit of pressure because of aging infrastructure, which will require, just to maintain uh, the current capabilities, uh, significant investment. There, the recent past has um, led to an increased dependence on natural gas at the large uh, central generation plants. Uh, the natural gas combined cycle are generally um, the most efficient for large centralized uh, electric production. Um, that increased dependence has, means the price of gas has a stronger impact on the price of electricity. So last year's polar vortex, um, 
price of gas went up, the price of electricity followed pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> this year, the commission directed the utilities to um, try to put some measures in place to try to keep the uh, price of electricity um, d lower and more constant. Um, and it is my understanding that it is working. Um, we've had a very cold winter, but uh, the prices have not spiked uh, as bad as last year. Um, peak demand. Peak demand is the moment or the hours um, where the system is, is under the heaviest stress. It's when everybody is using the system um, to its fullest capacity. Normally, that's a summer peak. Um, there's also a winter peak when it gets very cold, um, but the summer peak is uh, a hot summer afternoon. Everybody gets home and turns their air conditioning off, uh, on, excuse me, all at once. So the peak demand is a, an important thing to remember because we essentially build the system to meet that peak demand. So when you do turn on your AC, it works and everybody else's lights still work. Um, there's an inefficiency there because we build this um, system to handle that peak, but we pay for it the rest of the year when, um, must, when it's not being used to its full capacity. Uh, and peak demand is growing four times faster than overall usage. So that difference is, is getting worse and the inefficiencies are getting worse. One of the main objectives of, of REV is to increase the efficiency of the system um, through, as we modernize it, through more distributed uh, resources on the grid, um, but also to change how folks, give folks the opportunity and the choice to, um, to change the way they use electricity and change the way they interact with the electric company, including um, generating yourself. There's a lot of folks that are already putting solar panels on their houses. Um, storage, we expect to play a bigger role. Um, and all of that is, is designed or will be designed and implemented with the intent of increasing the efficiency of the system, lowering that peak demand, which will lower costs for all of us because we don't have to build it up to that high super Cadillac system that's only used for a few hours each year. And the generation that tends to get called on during those peak times too is, tends to be more expensive because it's not being used very often, so it sits there, but again, we gotta make sure it's ready. So you're paying for it all the time and it also tends to be dirtier. So the less we have to call on it, the cleaner the system is as a whole. Um, average electricity bills are increasing. Um, the issue of reliability uh, and resiliency of the grid has come to the forefront based on the large number of extreme weather events uh, that have impacted the system recently. Um, and new products are available all the time, uh, including smart thermostats uh, and other sensors and, and smart um, appliances, if you will, to help um, customers increase their efficiency of their use of electricity. Um, and all of these things really are, are what led us to REV. Um, the world is changing already the, because of these um, smart thermostats and distributed uh, generation such as solar PV. <clears throat> we have to recognize that change and we're trying to recognize that change because the utility system has pretty much functioned the same way as it does today for the past hundred years. Things are changing around us. So REV is a recognition of that change and it's hopefully uh, uh, will increase the speed at which the change takes place because we think it will end up a much greener, much more reliable system that's much more customer centric and that will give customers more, about, more choice and uh, more opportunity to use energy the way they feel comfortable using it. Um, any questions so far? The question is what does more mean? Um, we don't, in the REV proceeding specifically, we have not uh, set any specific um, goals or um, limits on how much, what percentage of green energy generation that we want. Um, those we expect actually to come out in the um, state energy plan. Um, so, but 1% is not what we're looking for. We're looking for a considerably um, vastly reformed electric system. Um, the EPA has already co has um, 
draft regulations out for carbon emissions from electric generation, um, and those those limits are going to be very strict. So if, if the final regulations are similar to the proposed regulations, um, I think you're talking about it's not an 80% reduction, but it's a significant 50% reduction, I think, um, in carbon production by 2030. Specifically looking into getting rid of gas altogether, um, that is not on the, on the menu right now. Um, but generally speaking, we are trying to get away from large-scale centralized generation and have um, the generation that is on the system uh, more um, distributed. Uh, but we, all, you know, we use the term distributed energy resources. That includes um, customer-sided uh, and even um, larger green generation, but it also includes energy efficiency and demand response. Uh, and we consider those um, actually not using energy as, as a resource to help manage the system and again bring that peak down um, and avoid carbon emissions. So these are the issues that uh, we're dealing with already and REV is part of the uh, comprehensive strategy that the Commission is using to help deal with them. Um, again, the status quo, the regulatory framework that is, we work under right now uh, has not changed dramatically. If much at all uh, over the past hundred years or so. Uh, it relies too heavily on traditional um, business models and more importantly traditional uh, infrastructure and the installation of um, power lines, generation facilities, and the rest of the equipment that supports that. Um, and it fails to incentivize innovation uh, and the adoption of new technologies that would make the system less greenhouse gas intensive um, and work better for customers. Uh, and already, I mentioned that the changes are starting to happen already. Um, there's technology out there, smart thermostats and other sensors that um, help minimize uh, folks' energy use. Uh, storage is becoming increasingly affordable. Uh, and solar and other customer-sided generation um, is increasing on the system already. In New York City, uh, Con Edison has a program where they actually um, can control the demand on their system during peak events and other emergency events by cycling uh, customers' air conditioners off um, during those events uh, without customer discomfort. It's, um, I, to be honest with you, I'm not sure exactly how it works if they cycle them off and on so quickly that the temperature um, doesn't change at all or it might drop uh, for a short period one or two degrees and they turn them back on. It's a voluntary program. The customers are compensated for participating in that. Uh, and generally, they, they don't notice unless they're standing right next to the air conditioner when it goes off that they're even participating. So uh, I believe that program offers them an annual uh, one-time annual payment, a payment annually for participating in the program for that year. To my knowledge, we've heard no complaints about the program. It's very successful and it has helped Con Edison um, control peaks, so it has controlled cost significantly. Rather than having to put more traditional infrastructure in, um, they can manage peak. Rather than always trying to build and build and build to, in, to meet that increasing demand, uh, we're trying to manage the supply in a way that prevents or uh, helps us avoid the cost of building all this stuff out and helps us avoid the environmental impacts of building it and using it. Right now it's just New York City and Con Edison's territory. The other, um, but the Commission has directed the other utilities to develop um, demand response programs. Um, I believe the first ones will probably, especially upstate areas, will likely deal with larger commercial customers um, because they can get a lot of load all at once. Um, but eventually we want these programs to um, be available through to residential and smaller users either, either directly through the utility or through aggregators who can get customers to sign up together and um, you know they might give them something similar to credit card points or they might write them a check for participating in these programs and they, they promise the utility company that they will shed so much demand or so much load when called upon um, and you know there's a number of different ways that that can that can happen. The last question was, the state when is the state energy plan going to be released, the final? Uh, I don't know that answer. It is overdue. Um, but the, the draft state energy plan is currently available for... Where is 
Um, if you Google New York State Draft State Energy Plan, um, it'll come up. There's a, a, I'm not sure if they're a board or a commission that drafts that um, plan. They have their own website. So I talked about the com commission directing other utilities to start developing more and more demand response um, programs. Um, and this is why flattening peak is such a big deal. Uh, we put a number on it here. If we could just flatten the uh, top 100 hours of that peak demand over the course of a year, we could save uh, New Yorkers $1.2 billion. So it, it is significant. Those savings would be reflected in customer bills. Opportunities for new technologies, we've talked about that. I think they just added this slide so they could get a picture of the Nest thermostat in there. So the benefits of the new technologies such as solar, um, not that that's a new technology, but the price is coming down, but there are other new technologies and services out there, is it'll allow customers to better manage their electricity usage and bills. Um, it'll provide consumers with more reliable and more res uh, resilient electric service. It will reduce carbon emissions and other greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and it'll reduce the need for new electricity, uh, electricity infrastructure, um, including the different aspects of the system, generation, transmission, and distribution, thereby lowering costs and lowering bills. Uh, and again, improving the overall efficiency of the electric sy system to put downward pressures on bills. The proposed market structure for this new distributed system. Right now we have a few dozen uh, generation plants uh, and they need to be coordinated on the system as everyone's um, using and everyone's use needs to be coordinated. Once um, the high level of distributed resources including solar, uh, storage, and other energy resources that will be on the grid, it'll, it, the amount of coordination will increase um, many times exponentially was the word I was looking for. Um, so at this point in the REV proceeding, we're, uh, the, in, the commission is considering what we're calling track one, which is um, the, what they're actually considering is the utility's role in the new uh, modern um, energy system, um, specifically whether or not they would be the distributed platform provider, the company that is uh, coordinating the, the different distributed resources um, and transactions that energy transactions that may be taking on may be taking place on the grid um, and they're all another important utility role that they're considering is whether or not utilities can own um, renewable generation uh, the staff proposal uh, proposes that the utilities would be the distributed um, platform provider. It also proposes that they uh, could own um, some generation in limited circumstances uh, on uh, under some of the conditions. Are, it has to be on utility property. They have to have put the, um, the need or the need for the generation out to the market for bid. To, and really, I think um, no one or no uh, no usable offers came in, um, so the utilities are, again, this is just proposed by staff, the commission is considering this, um, but the utilities would essentially be acting as a backstop. Uh, it, again, if the market or uh, other private investors didn't um, come in and uh, offer to, to build whatever um, renewable generation that we're talking about that the utilities may be allowed to own. The, the question was, um, what about municipalities or um, communities, communities uh, owning their own resources, the distributed resources? Absolutely. So if, if I'm coming across as saying the utilities will, uh, will own these distributed resources, in what the staff proposal is for in very, very limited circumstances that that be allowed. But generally speaking, the distributed resources themselves are, would be customer owned or uh, non-utility owned. Um, the utilities would still own the wires that connect these distributed resources together. Um, so some of the community concepts that are out there are microgrids, um, which are just what they sound like. They're small grids. They usually have some source of generation or storage uh, on that gr microgrid. They're, most normally, they're attached to the grid itself, but they can detach from the overall grid in times of 
um, when that system is down. So they can do their own generation. They might not be able to meet 100% of their normal load, but uh, it's connected to emergency stuff. Um, NYU is a microgrid that was very successful and demonstrated their importance and value during Sandy because it was up and running uh, much sooner. Um, but there's also, and the commission is looking at it, we'll, it's in the next slide, um, uh, a concept called community choice aggregation. Um, and that has a number of different forms. There are communities out there now in other states that uh, just get together and um, decide that they're going to take uh, the electricity itself from a competitive supplier. And because they're aggregating all those customers, and um, they can often get a discount, uh, other groups have done it so they can do 100% renewable or a high uh, percentage level of renewable and get that um, as far as their um, the supply of electricity itself. Uh, but there's also, um, and I, I don't know if this is, I, I know folks are planning it now in different parts of the, uh, there's folks in New York planning it, um, and the commission is looking at it, but I think there's other folks in other states, excuse me, that are a little further along, where the community would actually own um, infrastructure, including uh, perhaps like a community solar garden, um, and they would kind of develop uh, their own distributed resources in a way that they wanted to under you know, whatever, whatever dr drives that community, whether it's just to work together, whether it's they wanted to do it 100% renewable. Um, and it's, we see it as a way to provide access to the benefits of owning these resources. Um, there's tax benefits, there's environmental benefits, there's um, financial benefits. So folks who don't necessarily have um, a rooftop that is solar accessible. We don't know exactly how, how the specific programs and whether they'll be like rebates or the utility because they're saving, let's say, um, I'll give you a good example already. Um, Con Edison came in and said, we want to build a billion dollar uh, substation to meet growing demand in parts of Queen and, Queens and Brooklyn. Um, we, we worked with them, staff for the Department of Public Service said, we think there's a better way to meet that need other than spending a billion dollars for this traditional infrastructure, particularly in this neighborhood, which already has a lot of uh, energy um, infrastructure in it. So Con Ed went and came back with a plan that basically postpones um, the, the need for that infrastructure by some of it's through solar generation, some of it's through demand management. Um, and the so they save a billion dollars over here. Um, I don't know exactly, I forget the budget that they're requesting for the alternative solutions, but it's extremely different. They're gonna save a lot of money. So, but some of the costs of that program will go to customers who participate in the demand response programs and the, I don't know how they would, um, they're gonna have to pay someone to, to build the generation. Um, so in, in that way, there will be, um, money available for these, these things to happen. And we also think, which what happened with solar was um, now with, uh, you can go to a, a regular bank, if you will, and get financing for a solar system. 10 years ago, a regular bank wouldn't have touched that because they had no idea if it would work. Now that the, their you know, so solar PV has become much more mainstream, uh, financing it is, and we hope a lot of these other um, renewable technologies will, will follow the same course. The New York ISO is the New York Independent System Operator. They manage the bulk electric system, the, the larger transmission and the wholesale market. Um, so there, there are some parallels between the NISO and what we expect the DSP to do, um, but there are some differences. Um, staff's proposal um, recognizes that the independent uh, DSP may have some advantages, but um, the way it explains its decision to promote the utilities is the utilities are already doing most of that job already. There's a lot, they plan it for their system, they build it, they maintain it. Um, so they would have to be so integrated with the independent um, folks that there'd be a lot of uh, overlap and a lot of uh, costs. It's, a lot of it has to do with cost. But staff's proposal does, um, I think it suggests some limitations on you know, the utility's role 
and what they can do in that uh, position. Um, and it also raises the possibility of, you know, ending that role if the utilities don't um, live up to it. For, as far as public ownership of the, of the utility distribution system, um, okay. Uh, we, we certainly look at other countries and other folks and what they're doing all the time uh, to learn from them and to learn from the good things they do and the mistakes. Have you uh, modeled, considered, studied a alternative ownership model, an alternative structure to the utilities playing the DSP role? And if you have, can you say something more about what you looked at and how those things compared in cost? Because you just said it would be expensive. And I'm just wondering what, what the comparison is. That, that the, there, that there, there. there was no specific cost benefit analysis that was done. Um, but it, it, you'd have to develop uh, that body. You'd have to pay the folks who were that body. Um, you'd have to have some sort of implementation rules. They'd have to be able to coordinate with the utilities. So you have all of that um, that the staff proposal thought was unnecessary at this time. And, and I understand people's concerns with the utilities versus a, uh, independent. But you also have to understand that we're not going to switch to this new system next year or next week. Um, it's, it's an organic kind of iterative process that as we develop the higher and higher levels uh, and deployment of the distrib distributed resources, um, the exact role of that platform provider is going to change over time. Um, and it may, at some point, it may become clear and obvious that it should be something other than the utility ownership model. Um, but right now, staff has proposed utility ownership because they thought they were the folks that could best get this started. They know their systems. Um, they already have the engineers and the planners uh, on staff to do the, these um, activities. Uh, so again, that's staff's proposal. The commission hasn't decided. One example, one concrete example, was the Queen, the New York, uh, the Con Edison Queens, Brooklyn, where they're using demand management and customer sited and smaller distributed renewable generation no, they, no, to replace the need for traditional uh, substation. No, they're not developing their own grid. They're developing different programs to manage the demand and otherwise provide uh, local distributed generation in that community to avoid building a traditional substation. The community is, um, has been involved in the process, but they're not designing it per se. The, there uh, are private companies that provide these services and build these things uh, that have responded to Con Ed's request for proposals. Um, I, some of them might be community-based. I, I don't know. The commission is looking more generally, rather than a specific proposal from a specific community for whatever um, system or program that they want to implement, more generally at uh, the implications of those types of ownership models, uh, common ownership of solar gardens and whatnot, and their implications for um, interacting with the system, so, uh, and, and how those communities interact with, within themselves to make sure that people still have electric service. We plan to encourage customer-sided generation of renewables, but we also plan to set the utility rates, how they make their money, in a way that will help capture the value of the, these um, distributed resources, whether they're generation or just demand response, energy efficiency, um, in a way that customers would get paid for the value that they provide to the system. Now, um, th there's net metering now and there's other, we, that's track two. Um, how we set the rates and the exact rates so we can make sure that the utilities incentives, which are generally to make money, they're a private corporation, um, are aligned very well with our objectives so they make money when the carbon and other greenhouse gases um, on their system goes down. The efficiency of the system will increase, so the peakers, we call them, the generation that's called on quite often during a peak event um, is dirtier than this, the base load or the other types of generation that's available. And again, um, it, because the system will be more distributed, there's also uh, an avoidance of loss that happens in large scale or long distance transmission of electricity. So as part of um, 
getting customers to understand what's available out there and helping um, the service providers that are out there find their customers easily and educate consumers on what's available and the impacts of their energy choices. The commission is envisioning um, a, it will be an online portal. Um, we're not, again, this will be something that is iterative and grows and meets needs as they become apparent. But one of the features that is um, largely discussed is a comparative shopping tool. So you can choose competitive suppliers uh, more easily. Um, something like the, uh, the Orbits or the Kayak things that um, you can plug in a little bit of information, tell them what you want, and they give you a bunch of prices in a way that's easy to understand. Generally, that information is not available right now in a way that's easy for me to understand anyways. We hope it'll be a platform where um, there'll, be all, there'll be apps and every, like a solar app, you can put in your address and it will tell you how much you could expect to generate. You, know, you might have to put in the size of your roof or the size of the space you want to put those panels. Um, and other things that are much, be, hopefully, beyond my imagination, which is limited. Okay, so this is the, um, the procedural um, aspects. The track one, we talked about the, uh, the utilities role. The track two is um, the rate setting, the devil in the details. That's gonna be very important. There will be a proposal we expect in the next few months. The commission does, uh, is appointed, generally speaking, by the governor. Um, not all the current commissioners were appointed by Governor Cuomo, I don't think. Nominated. Nominated by the governor, I'm sorry, and confirmed by the Senate. Okay. This public statement hearing? Well, and, and the proceeding is a political process? Um, if that's your opinion? Yep. So then the bottom line is... Uh, I, I disagree with you, generally, just for the, for the non-record record. We, we think this energy plan is very progressive. We've had folks from all over the world congratulate us for trying to do it. We, we, we are trying to do that. If, if we switched it all tomorrow, the lights would go off and the commission is not comfortable with that. So, but we are trying to drive towards a, a much more renewable and clean system. Um, the Clean Energy Fund we already talked about, um, that's a proposal to support uh, energy efficiency um, and, and renewable energy. Uh, the commission has also directed that the, um, the, a, the, a look at or an assessment of the low income programs that are currently offered to make sure that the, uh, the folks who are receiving the assistance are getting it in a way that actually helps. Um, so we're, they're looking at best practices um, and trying to make the programs more, more user-friendly. Um, and then community choice aggregation, that's the community um, plans that we talked about, whether or not they just aggregate their um, demand for uh, a particular type of um, supplier or whether they actually uh, own infrastructure or, and have a much more developed kind of community system and plan. Um, so that they're happy with the way the, the energy that they're using is being um, produced. Up here is how to comment. It's also in this information, because I'm gonna shut this down, um, is on the information sheets that were handed out as you came in. The question um, was one about funding, what is currently called the customer cited tier and the um, large, or in large scale um, renewable projects uh, through the renewable portfolio standard which is a, a program that is currently running, um, and whether or not those will continue in, in REV. Um, procurement of utility scale, large scale renewables is under consideration by the commission, um, exactly how to get, how to procure those. Um, they are considering and that will be considered in REV. Um, as far as customer cited um, stuff, there's the New York Sun, which will continue for solar. Uh, and the Clean Energy Fund does have proposals for a number of, for funding for, to support these programs. Um, they're a little different. They're, most of those propose um, support or funding further upstream, not necessarily to the end user, that will help lower a, pro a producer or a service provider's cost with the intent that um, the customer will see some savings as well because the 
it'll, the whole system will be working better. We do expect the utilities to continue to run programs that would um, provide more direct customer assistance to help uh, get these continue to get the customer sighted um, things in place, whether it's renewable generation or demand response or a simple very cost-effective energy efficiency. The point this gentleman made was uh, a lot of the funding for the tier one, the larger renewables, um, went unspent. Um, but the customer-sided tier uh, funds were always used up, and he's suggesting perhaps we could repurpose the funds. Um, I asked him to include that suggestion on the record. It is certainly one um, I think NYSERDA has, is considering how to best move forward. Um, and again, the procurement of large-scale renewables um, is, you know, they're looking at different models to try to figure out how to get the most for the least cost. Um, NICE, those funds that you're talking about, the system benefit charge, um, funded NICE CERTA programs as well as utility programs. And then the, we are, will direct the utilities, or the commission rather, um, to continue programs, um, but they would most likely be funded directly through their rates. Um, so it, that the step down of funding um, for NYSERDA isn't as significant as it looks because that billion dollars um, also included utility funds or u utility programs, which will continue in one form or another. We, we want them to be embedded as, if, if we can figure out how to do this, as part of their core business. So it's not, okay, we, we we do the same old stuff we used to, and then we charge a little extra money for some energy efficiency light bulbs and whatever. We want to really drive it to s such large scale that it's the utilities, that's, they basically get paid to not carry energy over their lines. I mean, that's an oversimplification, um, and because I, I'm being recorded, I'll probably get in trouble saying something like that. But um, so. So we expect those programs to, to be out there, and I believe there's um, the commission, I'm not sure if it's in the staff proposal or it's an early co uh, commission document commencing this proceeding, um, suggest that there be no backsliding as far as the energy efficiency um, savings that were, were, were being produced by the, the current plans. Um, NIPA is a whole other um, animal or authority um, and generally speaking, we don't have authority over them. Um, if they, for siting purposes, if they were gonna build uh, infrastructure, facil generation facilities or transmission facilities, we might, um, or we would have jurisdiction. Um, but we, there, they recognize that things are changing um, and we do work closely with NIPA because um, they are part of the industry. They're, um, although they're a public authority, um, they're, they're an, an electric company um, for most intents and purposes. Uh, and again, all, the system is integrated, so we have to work with them. Um, but we don't authorize their funding or anything like that. So um, they'll be part of all of this as it moves forward, but we don't have a direct impact on their budget or things like that. Microgrids, the scale of microgrids. Um, the commission, um, or the staff, I think, put out a, a, a proposed definition. Um, it doesn't include size. Uh, and you said a conversation with NIPA, they said it would require some sort of natural gas generation. I don't know the circumstances for that. Um, I, th from, from a, uh, yeah, so I can't say what NIPA was thinking. I think a lot of folks, um, think that natural gas generation is, it's not intermittent like solar or wind may be. Um, therefore, if you're going to use, uh, if you're gonna use that generation in an emergency situation, um, you'd want something that's not intermittent. Now storage and other things can fix the, the intermittency problem, um, but I'm not an electrical engineer, so I don't know if it can fix all the other problems that concerned some folks that would say you need natural gas. Um, and as far as size, I, I don't think there's any um, particular size limit envisioned. Um, it would have to work with this, the rest of the grid as it attaches to it. Um, but whether it's a couple of houses on a neighborhood, uh, in a neighborhood, um, or you know, in a, a few city blocks in Manhattan, um, I don't think either one of those would are precluded at this point.
I don't think they're envisioned as large as a city, but I don't think there's anybody envisioning putting up roadblocks that would prevent that from working if, it, if there was a, a proposal that would work and made sense. Um, me meeting the generation needs or the demand for an entire city uh, right now today, just through uh, other types of generation with natural gas would be very difficult. Not impossible, I don't think. And it depends on the size of the city you're talking about. Um, but it would entail quite a bit of um, solar panels and some wind and some other stuff and some storage to make sure that uh, you had that all working when you needed it. The vision includes a, maybe not one centralized, but the utilities um, as they develop, more, as they build out these systems for them to be uh, interoperable. Um, and for the customer and the service providers who often, usually uh, larger customers like um, a retail store that has lo separate locations, they may be in um, separate utility territories. We, we want it to work so those two, um, so it's easy for those types of customers. Um, usually a residential customer is one is in one. Um, but the service providers that will be either installing these resources or uh, aggregating demand or whatever they, services they're providing, we want them to be able to work across service territories. Um, so we are directing the utilities to make sure their systems will be interoperable uh, and make sure that the customer experience is as seamless across territories as possible. But historically, these systems are they're different companies. They were built out very differently. Even within one service territory, they have, uh, you know, Manhattan is a very different system, um, designed differently, not just because it's more, uh, it's denser um, than anything else in the state. So some of that historic reasons are why you have differences. We're trying to get them to come more to a, a uniform experience for the customer. Why new fossil fuel infrastructure is being considered when um, the commission, the interstate uh, uh, gas pipelines are not cited by the commission. They're federal. It's a federal agency. Um, and, to, and that answer right there, I think, is why you see a patchwork, if you will, of um, energy policies is because you have a patchwork of federal, state uh, agencies and authorities that... Historically, that is often true, um, but the, fe the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, um, which is the federal version of our State Public Service Commission, they have different policy objectives. They're different people, and they look at the world differently than our commissioners. We do. We often file comments uh, from the perspective of the commission. Um, they actually, which was historical, we um, recently, I believe it was in January, a couple few months ago, they had a joint um, session. It wasn't, you know, they didn't vote on um, orders or not, but they, uh, the, our commission met with the, uh, publicly, met with the federal commissioners uh, and had a discussion about things. One of the things that came up was the... Um, Constitution I, I, No, that didn't come up, actually. Uh, it was a, a new... Um, load zone that the feds uh, thought was a great idea in the lower Hudson Valley. Our public, uh, we, the New York um, Commission opposed it uh, and th that was brought up. Um, but we've, we actively oppose a lot of their decisions and are actively participate in their proceedings. This uh, gentleman has a c mentioned a concern that um, once you install something, it could be outdated. I'm paraphrasing, but um, basically you set up a plan, you, you, you build a system, and then two days later, technology says that system's outdated. Um, we are, that is very high on the, um, everyone who's been involved on their um, radar screen, if you will, uh, and we are directing to make sure that things are, con are upgradable um, and that we avoid a lot of stranded costs in case we do have to shift directions. Well, the utilities are, want to find out, find the best and easiest way to get it done too. So I don't think that they would be opposed by going through community groups to get this stuff done. Is that if that is the best way to do it? And um, 
the commission is, I think, backing away from telling the um, utilities exactly the design of specific plan programs and plans to, me to meet whatever um, performance goals that they have. Um, but that doesn't mean if there is a particular thing that they're ignoring that the commission wouldn't step back in and either suggest or direct. So if you think the utilities as this moves forward are ignoring um, community groups as a, as a good resource, then you should let us know and continue to let us know that they are a good resource as we make decisions and maybe the utilities will not have to be told and they'll just use them. The commission does have some siting authority over intrastate infrastructure related to get natural gas. Um, so they could discourage it through that authority. Um, although there's some very specific legal standards of the commission's review there. So it, it may not allow them just to say, no, we don't want you to do that because it's natural gas. Uh, um, but we think and it's, it's not a direct discouragement necessarily that the REV proceeding, and as people get to choose how they want their electricity generated, if for no other way they put their own generation on their roof, um, that as people choose non-gas related generation and other infrastructure, that that stuff will be discouraged by people who, who don't want it, from communities who don't want it. Um, and, and we support that. So again, you know, as we uh, grow through this process, um, th you know, there'll be different things that may be more direct discouragement um, or not. But um, education is, pro is, is going to have to be the foundation of all of this because a lot of folks have no idea of how the electric system works. Um, and even now, and as it changes and modernizes and it likely becomes more complicated for people to make good choices, they're gonna to have to be educated. Um, so we see that as a very important role. And community groups are always very good at educating folks. I imagine, but they're not scheduled yet, that we would have um, things like this as the process moves forward. As far as just general outreach and education, there, again, we know that it's an important part. We, we don't have a specific plan yet, so if you have suggestive ways on good ways to reach large numbers we can't afford um, uh, prime time television spots I'm not that good looking anyways so they wouldn't let me on TV um, but but we need people's help to be honest with you because we can't reach everybody there needs to be some mechanism for dialogue absolutely but th there are um, already planned there's uh, uh, working groups and you know uh, stakeholders that will include community groups and smaller uh, residential and other consumer uh, representatives um, that will be working together to help design all of this stuff. Um, and there will be notices on the commission's website when these things are going on. Um, so, kind of like check back every day, huh? Yep, but you can also sign up to have things um, delivered right into your email box. Make a special folder because there's a lot of stuff that comes through. Yeah.